O Lord, may the words of Scripture dwell richly in our hearts and prompt us to act as we are directed. In Jesus' name, amen. Brothers, I watched a couple of series before Easter, um, Bible stories, both of which had different characters depicting the role of Peter. And it's funny how um, a role can really get into your head and, and how somebody um, plays a role can really affect your thinking. And, and what I mean is, um, one of the Peters was not as strong as the Peter that was in my imagination. And I really had trouble through the whole, and I didn't even know why, but through the whole movie figuring out what was wrong with this story. I mean, this was a familiar story, and yet it wasn't being played by the person that I had in my head imagining, you know, imagined as Peter. Today, as I listened and read the Acts scripture that you heard read, I feel that same person that I know as Peter, that strong personality ringing out with the intensity of his words. The words seem to come from Peter's own heart. And I wonder if they're laced a little bit with his regret. After all, he had denied Jesus three times. And often times when we do something that we regret, we become stronger in the aftermath. It's what happens when we take up the cross and follow Jesus with our full commitment. Peter is a Jew speaking to Jews. Biblical commentaries remind us that the church of the first and second centuries has not yet developed, it's not yet happened, it's emerging. And these religious communities were both multi-ethnic and multicultural. I wonder sometimes how we moderns fail to realize when we think, you know, that times are so different that when we look back, times aren't really as different as we may think. We tend to hear this reading today from an anti-Semitic perspective where the Jews are the bad guys. When in fact, Peter was speaking to Jews, yes, but he was addressing those who were skeptical of the growing Jesus movement. We have to be careful, careful not to read the text as though it's all Jews, but to be aware that he was speaking um, towards these oppressive attitudes that were around him, both religious and political. Karen Baker Fletcher kind of helps to understand that. She says he would be horrified to see how some very powerful Christians after the third and fourth centuries have misappropriated some words attributed to him to persecute, persecute excuse me, Peter's own people. The one whom Peter preached, crucified and resurrected was a Jew, indeed son of God of Israel in Peter's understanding. So let's return to the words of Peter that come in the aftermath of an event. And I'm so glad that you heard that event in the story that Sandy offered today because without that story you're kind of lost as to what he's responding to. There had been this wonderful healing there by the man who was very well recognized by the community and who had been a paralytic who had often been in the portico that was kind of his place every single day. And when he was, mere, he was uh, healed suddenly after all those many years that caused a stir. And there were people coming to the temple to see what was going on. And they flocked to see what was happening. They came from near and far to visit that place on the portico where this man had been healed. And what, they, what did they get? They got Peter's sermon. Behind the event is also the conflict between the apostles and Jewish authorities. Jesus Christ changed the entire climate. He taught people. He challenged people. He challenged them to think outside their own known context. He invited them to imagine how God's kingdom might be experienced in this life. He offered hope to their circumstances. He healed people. He made them whole. It was certainly a new way of experiencing God, one that traditional Jews might have a little trouble with and, 
and might have to think about. We have to be careful in our understanding of Jesus to respect that Christians and Jews hold some of the same tradition that's sacred and holy. The question, who is Jesus, is what really emerges from Peter in his words today. His words will replace an ethnic distinction of God's people with a theological one. In other words, God's people were Hebrews in one time, and Peter's about to open up the door and say, God's people can now be realized in a person, in Jesus Christ. Peter associates Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and Hebrew ancestors with Jesus to invite his hearers to remember that Jesus is grounded in Israel's principal patriarchs. This is the same God who, in Peter's words, has glorified his servant Jesus. His audience knew that Jesus was crucified by the order of Pontius Pilate, and crucifixion was a degrading and agonizing death, as well as God-forsaken. It was a God-forsaken way to die, according to Deuteronomy 21, 22 through 23. Peter lays the blame on his fellow Israelites, but, but at the same time, he links Christians to the faith and the relationship with Israel. Again, Karen Baker Fletcher helps out. She's, her words are, followers of Christ and the descendants of the people of Israel alike <coughs> are chosen by God for salvation and life. Peter presses on this relationship of Jesus, reminding that Jesus is the holy and righteous one. Jesus is the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. Those who understand their salvation in Jesus Christ move towards Jesus as a personal savior. Flavius Josephus, a first century Romano-Jewish historian, wrote this about Jesus. About this time lived Jesus, a wise man, if it be proper to call him a man. For he was a doer of wonderful works, a teacher of such men as received the truth with pleasure. He drew over to him both many of the Jews and many of the Greeks. He was the Christ. And when Pilate, at the insignation of the principal men among us, had condemned him to the cross, those who loved him at first did not forsake him. For he appeared to them alive again on the third day, the divine prophets having foretold these and many other wonderful things concerning him. And the sect of Christians so named after him are not extinct to this day. I think those are remarkable words from a man who was a Jew and a historian. His words are powerful. Peter presses home the point. By faith, you will know Jesus. Faith is what moves us to act. C.J. Lewis pro provides some insight here. A man who was merely a man said, that, said the sort of things Jesus said wouldn't be a great moral teacher. He'd be either a lunatic on a level of which a man says he's a poached egg, or else he'd be the devil of hell. You must make your choice. Either this man was and is the Son of God, or else a madman or something worse. But don't let us come up with any patronizing nonsenses, nonsense about his being a great human teacher. He hasn't left that open to us. He didn't intend to. Peter reminds those he is preaching to that the man who was healed was healed because he had faith that Jesus could do it, that Jesus was God. And then Peter invited those who may have misunderstood Jesus to accept, accept what he had to offer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. God has glorified Jesus. The life and death, death of Jesus reflects God and tells us who God is. Charles Spurgeon wrote, He was perfectly God and at the same time perfectly man. No person has ever done or will ever do what Jesus did and still does. Jesus still brings us to God and makes it possible for us to live together in loving, respectful relationships, in community, and in grace. He revealed God, and he reveals to humanity who he is by his life. 
We believe that Jesus is God's own son because we find God in him and through him, and God finds us through him. We, beheld the we behold the glory of God in this personal relationship that we know in Jesus Christ, this relationship that represents God's love for us, God's love for each our love for each other, and God's love through Jesus Christ. God is known to us and through us in Christ. He gives our life meaning. He gives our life purpose. Not too long ago, we had a visit from someone who came to this church and used to attend church here. Her life has been dramatically changed. She has accepted Jesus Christ. What joy it is, the moment of faith, when everything comes together and a person surrenders to grace, to that personal relationship. In Jesus, we find peace, glory, honor, and joy. Let's rejoice in the glory of God through Jesus Christ. This is the word of God for today. Amen.